Hey guys, Ray from Love You RV. Nice day today, December 20th, and they say it's going to be up to 8 degrees Celsius today. Very low wind, so it's a good chance for me to do my next project. I'm really excited about this one because it's going to save me a, a lot of crawling around on the ground. I'm going to install a new electric valve on my galley tank from a company called Drain Master. Now, if you remember when I was putting on my skirting, I showed you that uh, I had to put an opening in the in the skirt so I could crawl under the slide. Between the tires is where my galley valve is located. Great place to locate it. Thanks, uh, Keystone. Anyway, in the past I've installed the, the Drain Master electric valves for my black tank and my shower tank, and they've performed really well over the last few years. I'll link back to the, the install video. I did a very uh, comprehensive install video on those valves and demoed them in action and everything. So if you want to look back on that, uh, the link will be in the description. So this should make it fairly easy for me to install because I already have power to those two electric valves. I just have to tap in the power. They, need, they run off of 12 volts. Let's see there, there's the wires negative 12 and positive 12. And this is the valve. You get a little warning here, serious injury if you stick your fingers in there while they're, they're underway. Because <laughs> they are very powerful. This thing slides up and down and it's powered by an internal motor here. So unlike a lot of these valves, there's a lot of competitors on the market that are kind of taking the regular old valve and just slapping a motor on it. These are kind of built from the ground up to be an electric valve. Also a little bonus is they're also made in the USA. I'm a small company in Hollister, California. A uh, small business uh, puts them out. So I got a few other of their products as well. Uh, Libert sent me out the Wastemaster hose that they make. And also they have the 360 siphon there. So it's sort of a complete uh, RV waste management solutions. And being a small company, you can also phone them up. They have very good support and very good instructions like uh, you can see here there's this, a code to scan and you can get the manual and it even has specs down to like engineering specs on all this very detailed instructions um, here's the on the install you put in these uh, rubber gaskets they fit right in here people always notice that there's a on each side there's a space there that's totally normal and the gasket will cover that space when it's installed they also include molly coat compound. It's kind of a silicone type stuff that you put on there um, just to lubricate the valve. <clears throat> and then as far as controlling it, I have the single switch here. My last install I had their dual switch, so I just need one more for the galley. And it's a push switch, and I guess the LEDs will tell me if it's open or closed because there's a, a smart data cable here that hooks up to the switch and then hooks into here into a four pin thing. I also have a couple there. You can have you can mount your switches on the outside, say where you where your uh, your storage compartment is, or you actually can put them on the inside as well, so you can control them from the inside of the rig. So to install it, I'm gonna have to go underneath and do a bit of a mod to my plumbing. Because my galley tank is an inch and a half drain, I'm gonna to have to put on this adapter that they sent for me. And fair disclosure, this company sent this to me for free. Um, I, I guess they appreciate the videos I've done in the past and they saw how I was gonna to have to crawl under my rig so they contacted me and offered to, to send it out for free if I did an install video for it for them. So thanks very much, Drain Master. And so what we got to do is install this and you can see there's an inch and a half pipe but this is a this is a three inch opening so that'll go on and I'll connect that up to the existing pipe then I can just screw the the valve in place and then we'll hook up the data cable and the power and uh, mount the switch so I'll use a I'll put the switch under my other switches in my uh, wet bay compartment there and she should work out okay. So first things first, I'll download the instructions so I make sure I do everything right and we're gonna install the adapter and the valve. You see here they recommend that you install it at 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, sort of like that. 
for best operation. So hopefully I'll have enough room to do that. Okay, so we're deep in the bowels of the old Keystone Cougar. Right between the, the axles and the tires, you can see this is my galley tank. Luckily I've cut a flap in the past when I installed my uh, sea level uh, tank gauges right there. So that was convenient. This is the existing valve. You can see it's on the inch and a half pipe there. And on the other side of that is a rod. And then if you can see it right between the tires is the handle. That's why this one is such a pain. I have to crawl under the slide to get at it. And of course a lot harder with the skirting on. So this is going to be great. So you can see here they put it right against the tank with a three inch uh, output and then they went down to the inch and a half ABS pipe. So in a perfect world I would have a three inch coming out of here all the way out to my sewer you get a much better tank flush with a three inch but with this arrangement here it's going to be pretty difficult so I'm going to stick with the inch and a half and I think by the looks of it I am going to just leave this valve here and just leave it open and put the new valve they'll cut the pipe here and put on my flanges adapter flanges and then I can have the new valve right here and the reason I can't go to a three inch is I'm in the middle between the tires but my output is way up front there towards the front because the the um, black and the shower tank are right near the front of the rig and you can see how I've gone along there and I actually put a flexible hose to go around my uh, box that I installed for my sewer ho hose storage um, that was quite a mod. I'll link back to that if you want to see that. Anyway, I installed that, so I had to put that and make it go around the box to connect up with the existing 3-inch. I didn't want to have two outputs or anything, so it's drained pretty good. I haven't had any problems with clogs or anything. The other good thing is I have a HEPPO valve installed on my kitchen drain. It's pretty easy for me to unscrew it and pull it out and, and put a a cleaning wand into this tank and high pressure clean it every once in a while. Anyway, first thing to first is I'm going to make a cut here. I got my hacksaw that'll go through that ABS pretty quick. And then we'll uh, get to uh, seeing where we can mount that uh, valve. I don't have a lot of room in here, it's pretty tight. Okay, so I want to see where I want that flange mounted. Let's take this and kind of see how much I can get. Right about there. This looks like there's a bit of insulation above that. I should be able to push up on it a bit. Right about there. Should be a good mount for that. So we'll glue that onto this pipe right in that position. So I added some more of that goop on the face of this valve, the other side, and I put my other seal on this adapter plate. Now we're just going to put it in place and get my nuts and bolts so we can kind of tighten this in place.
Okay, get the nuts and bolts in place. So it's very important to torque on these nuts and bolts. Um, there's a little uh, security code that you put on your phone and you can get on onto a manual or you can look in the manual, but there is specify 10 pounds of torque and max uh, 15. It's very easy to tighten these so hard. It's plastic so you can crack it very easily. Also if you tighten it really tight, you know, in cold weather like right now we're going to be approaching cold weather, things can get brittle and crack so it's very important not to over tighten them. Now I'd have a tough time getting a torque wrench in here and my torque wrench is huge for my lug nuts so the other uh, spec they say is finger tighten them and then one revolution should be about 10 pounds. I've installed my other ones. I've had them apart once or twice. I um, had to remove a clog that had happened in one of them and uh, they really don't have to be very tight at all to seal so it's better to err on the side of a little looser and then you can always tighten them. If you tighten them too much you risk cracking them. They say out of all their uh, problems that people have, a lot of it is caused by over tightening. Another problem is if you over tighten them, then a lot of times you tighten them so much that the valve sticks, you know, it doesn't slide freely inside as well. So pushing them together and then tightening them with my hand. And then I'll do one revolution with the, the wrench. There we be. So they're uh, 7 16th nuts. So this is handy to have if you're an RVer is a little a quarter inch drive uh, socket set. Comes in really handy. Nice and small, easy to carry around. So now I gotta get this other thing in there and glue it in place. I think before I do that, I'm just going to get uh, some power and do a quick test, make sure this thing is operating. So, for my power for the electric valve, it um, requires 12 volts. Um, it calls for a 5 amp fuse, so that's the max uh, it's going to be as far as power draw. So I found some wiring here that I can um, tap into rather than running separate wires all the way back to my batteries. Um, here we have this white wire which is a ground wire. I measured it to the frame and there's zero ohms so it's definitely part of the ground return. Um, and this black wire up here that's a little thicker, I know from previous experience that that's the charging wire that's between my charge converter and it connects to the positive of the battery terminal, so I'm going to have 12 volts there. And then I've installed a fuse. This is a 5 amp fuse just to protect the, the valve and the, the wiring. So I'm just going to tape all that up and insulate it and uh, dress the leads and we can continue on. Now we got power connected up this four pin data cable and then we just connect it into the switch here give her a try. So green is closed red is open. Sounds like it's working pretty good in there. So I will can I will glue this pipe on here and that should complete the underneath part of it. There we be, all glued in place and installed. Show you the wiring there. Let's use some tape to tape it to the ceiling area there. Should be okay out of the way. Oh, it's cramped down here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to run the wire right now because the skirting's on. Everything 
It's kind of cramped down here, so I'm just going to move it over to my bay over there and use it temporarily until the skirting comes off, and then I'll pull down uh, the underbelly and do a proper job of sealing everything up and running the wire through the underbelly area. Okay. Let's go give her a test outside. Okay, all installed in my wet bay here. You can see my original two that I installed a couple years ago. Gray and black. And this is the new galley gray down here. A little bit different of a switch. So I mounted it underneath. Um, just drilled some holes and cut it out. And placed it in there and then screwed the cover on. So it's all hooked up. There was just that data cable to hook up. And now to dump the tank, green means that uh, it's closed, uh, red means open. So we just hit it like that and it switches to red and I can hear the, the water coming out and going out the, the drain. That's all we have to do to drain the tanks. And then close them up, you push it again and green is closed. So that should be a lot easier, especially like I say, because I have the skirting on here. Normally I would go under the slide between the tires, but now I just got to push the button and see where I had an opening here where I could crawl under and get at the valve. This is much nicer. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you found that uh, helpful if you're going to be installing electric valves or are interested in uh, electric valves. I'll leave a link to the Drain Master website here. They have a load of information on uh, sewer waste and a bunch of different products. They even do custom installs of the, of the sewer hose and the sewer hose storage boxes and also, of course, the electric valves. So you can always uh, give them an email or a call if you're interested. And like I say, proudly made in the U.S. of A. Until next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.